They were born in Armenia uh, and had to leave Armenia because of the genocide. He didn't have very much money in the beginning. Uh, you know, uh, he wasn't born into money. He didn't have money given to him. Every, everything he had, he worked for. And uh, he was really good at seeing how what he did today would work for him in the future. Uh, he was very much a planner. Uh, he made plans. Uh, he would wait until he could get that certain person to sit for his camera. Um, and then he made books, uh, which would always take him to the next level. There is no pyramid that's built this way. All pyramids look this way. So this is the thing, you need the base. So Karsh did the base for many, many years, probably 10 or 20 years before he had beyond the base. I mean, we come back to this. This is what you do early in your career if you're a portrait photographer, you photograph babies and weddings. And then um, Karsh did some work in the theater. Uh, so uh, he, uh, for many, many years, he photographed um, all the stage plays at Ottawa Little Theater. When I was studying photography at Ottawa U about 10 years ago, uh, one of the photographers that I kept coming back to over and over again was Yusuf Karsh. Karsh had a way in photography of showing you more than just what the person looked like. There was something in his pictures that made you feel like you knew the person you were looking at. And that was, that was remarkable because that was the case in every single picture he took whether it was a picture of Winston Churchill that everybody knows, or pictures of actors who were famous at the time that aren't necessarily famous anymore, you always got to know a little bit more about the person by looking at the picture. There was some magical element of storytelling present in every one of his photos. And that was something that really grabbed me as a, a young photographer and something I've been wanting to do ever since I first picked up a camera. I do that through film, through stories now, but Karsh could do that in a single print, which was amazing. In fact, the first time that I met him, uh, I was on my way into the Chateau Laurier, where his studio was, um, and that day I was commissioned to photograph a wedding. Um, so I was struggling with all the equipment that I had to carry uh, and trying to open the door. And Mr. Karsh came up behind me. I didn't see him at first. And he opened the door for me. And when I realized who it was, I said, oh, you're Mr. Karsh. And he said, yes, I am. And gave me encouraging words about uh, the work that I was about to do. Uh, you know, saying, oh, it's such a beautiful day for the work. And uh, he had... Uh, I guess been out for a walk. He had picked some wildflowers. He had those in his hand, and we had a brief conversation, which, uh, which I remember to this day very vividly because uh, it was such a unique experience to see, you know, the man who we all assumed was the best photographer uh, that we could talk to, uh, and he came up to me. <laughs>
He was extremely famous, yeah. I was only maybe 22 or 23 at the time. Such a remarkable thing when you meet somebody who's uh, achieved so much that you hope to do at the beginning of your career. Um, you know, it always uh, made me wonder where I would end up. So, uh, uh, and he was, I don't know, maybe my age now when I was that age or, or maybe a bit older, I don't know, but uh, he seemed very old to me, <laughs> but he was very encouraging. But it all started with his most famous picture, which uh, at the time, this was on uh, uh, so many magazine covers. Uh, it was a really huge, uh, now uh, if somebody made a photograph that was published that, that much, we would say it's gone viral. Uh, at that time, of course, there was no social media, no uh, internet. Uh, we had magazines and uh, every magazine in the in uh, Canada, the US, uh, Britain, uh, they all published this picture of Churchill. And uh, this is the one that made Karsh famous. It took him up to the next level and um, allowed him to uh, do this section, which is called the famous 500. And uh, Karsh photographed so many famous people that everybody knew who he was. And um, when he asked, someone to sit for their portrait, uh, it would be normally they would just say yes. Karsh also wasn't afraid to, to change what a portrait was. There was this idea in, in portraiture from paintings where a portrait is a person well lit, you see their face, they're looking at the painter or at the camera, but Karsh would turn that around. Karsh's remarkable ability to show you a person. Uh, one of the, the biggest ones that really stands out is the picture of Albert Einstein. There, there's a famous picture of Einstein that went around on posters in every classroom in the 90s where he's got his tongue out looking like this crazy madman. But Karsh's portrait is, is very composed. Einstein is sitting there with his hands in front of him as if he was thinking. And there's something going on in his mind. You can tell there's, he's thinking, there's math, there's some physics equation happening in there in that one picture that just happens to be Albert Einstein. And that, that one pose with hands clasped in front of him is something he used over and over again. You see that again in his picture of Kennedy. Uh, it's in the picture of Humphrey Bogart, he's holding a cigarette, he's got his hands in front of him as if he's thinking, which shows you more than, than just having the person's face in the picture. He's got a very famous picture of Pablo Casals, the cellist, who is sitting in an attic somewhere in a study playing the cello and you don't even see his face, it's from the back. He's lit with a light coming in and it, it's an amazing view that you as an audience member seeing him play never would have. You would be in the seat looking at the orchestra, you'd never be looking at it from the back. But that portrait really shows a lot of who the player is, who a cellist is, from an angle that you couldn't be shown. And this idea of not showing everything really made, for me, a lot of what made Karsh such a great photographer.
would do remarkable things. Uh, for example, he's got a portrait of Muhammad Ali, where all you see are his two hands. Everybody had seen Ali's face, and he was the greatest boxer of all time. But to, to take somebody like Muhammad Ali and show him by only showing his hands, really emphasizes a whole different side. Those are the hands that won the fight. That's what made him the fighter, the greatest of all time. And it's a bold step for a portrait, especially in the early 20th century, when everything was a picture of the person. You could put it on a postage stamp, send it around, to shoot just somebody's hands really sold it. But Karsh also had this ability to work with other visual artists and bring out parts of them that you wouldn't necessarily see or show them in a way that they didn't necessarily think of showing themselves. Uh, he's got a very famous portrait of uh, Pablo Picasso where he's standing next to a vase with a woman on it. Or he's got a portrait of Andy Warhol where Warhol is looking at the camera holding a brush to his head, almost in a way that you would hold a gun to your head. Uh, Warhol was known for being volatile, for being a person who would fly off the handle at all times. And to turn this idea of the brush to the temple as a gun to the temple really shows who Andy Warhol was. We knew Warhol through his paintings. Uh, some people knew him through his crazy temper and the parties he would throw. And Karsh's portrait really shows that in a very visual, in some cases very visceral way. encouraging in that he, his story was remarkable in that he came from uh, having nothing uh, to being one of the most accomplished portrait photographers in the world and that's that's a huge inspiration if he can do that then any one of us can so when I'm making portraits myself or when I'm uh, teaching my photography students I'm thinking about this kind of thing like how how inspiring somebody's story is and uh, a lot of what we do is, is um, trying to find a, a common story that we can share, uh, whether it's uh, for making a portrait, uh, trying to connect with that person, uh, even just for a brief moment, um, or uh, when I'm talking to a younger photographer or uh, a student, um, to say maybe you want to look at the work of this person uh, because I see some of that in your work. And uh, uh, so I think we all find our influences um, through the work. You yeah. do the work and uh, then when you're looking at your work you see how it fits into the wider world of history and work and uh, context.